welcome back to Elster's Rifles Reloading. And I'm going to make this short and simple, just the way I like it. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I anneal my brass using the Gen 2 annealese and my Elster's Trap Door Mod. And the way I anneal my brass is a collection of number one, using the primal rights method of annealing brass, and two, using test brass to set your burner and your timer. And to give credit where credit is due, look in the description box below for a link showing the primal rights method of annealing brass. Now when it comes to reloading, especially annealing brass, reloading and annealing is full of opinions. It's just like a-holes, everyone has one. <laughs> and it's just like finding your own journey, your method of doing things. You know, some people use Tempelac, some people count the amount of seconds that the brass is in the flame, blah, 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 blah. You know, I guess the, really the only thing I'm trying to show you here is how I anneal my brass. That's it. So I'm going to give you the quick and short version of the primal rights method of annealing brass. Now, you want your brass in the flame just long enough so the neck starts to glow. If it becomes red hot or orange flames are coming off the brass, it's in the flame too long. The second it starts to glow, get it out of the flame. It really is that easy. And that's why I use test brass to set up my burner and my timer. Obviously, you don't want to use your actual brass to set the burner and timer. You're just going to destroy it. And I will keep a collection of different types of overly used brass I was going to throw away anyways just as test brass, depending on what I'm about to anneal. You know, right now I reload for 6.5 Creedmoor, 223, 308, 243, and I'll keep a bin of each type of brass I was about to throw away anyways, just for test brass. Obviously in this example, I'm about to anneal 6.5 Creedmoor, so I'm gonna use my 6.5 test brass. So to make this short and simple, you're going to use your test brass to set the location of your torch, the length of the flame, how hot the flame is, and how long the test brass is in the flame itself using the speed control. Once you get that all set up, you can start to drop in your real brass that you're about to reload. And you might have to ever so slightly tweak it up or down, but it should be close enough so you don't destroy your real brass. Now why the Elster's Trapdoor Mod? Well this way you can fill up your Neal-E's Gen 2 or even the Gen 1 and fill all the way up to the brim. Set your torch and your speed control just right. Once it's ready to rock and roll, you just yank out your trapdoor and drop down your actual brass you're about to nail. Just remember, once that real brass drops down in the flame, you might have to tweak up or down your speed control ever so slightly, but it should be close enough. That way you don't destroy your actual brass. Now first and foremost, I highly recommend replacing the tray that comes with the Neal-E's. I actually picked uh, this larger tray up at the dollar store, obviously for a dollar, or you could pick them up at say Walmart or Home Depot, Menards for really cheap. Uh, but if you do have a dollar store uh, around your area, this is a must have. Now the first step is to adjust your ramp depending on the cartridge you're about to kneel. You want to adjust this ramp so there is approximately about a sixteenth of an inch between the brass and the top wheel at this point. Now when you set this ramp you want to not finger tighten this nut. You want to make sure that you use a pair of pliers and you want to righty tighty tighten that. So there's a good amount of torque, but not too much. You don't strip it out. And then you can ever so slightly adjust this down. So there is exactly a 16th of an inch between the brass and upper wheel at this point. You don't want it snug. You want to be able to slide it in and out, but you don't want a lot of gap here. The closer you can get this to a 16th of an inch, the more stable the brass will be in the flame. So it doesn't wobble too much. 
Now the next step is to adjust the placement of your torch in comparison to the casing you're about to anneal. Obviously using test brass, we're gonna set the length of the flame and the placement of the torch itself. Now the name of the game here is to obviously, if I use this big pen as a representation of the flame itself, is to get that inner hotter blue flame right dead center of the brass itself. And you also want to adjust that flame so it's approximately about one inch long and it's pointing directly at the junction of the shoulder and the neck body. Now you don't want the tip of that hotter blue flame actually touching the brass. In my opinion, I would say you want that approximately about an eighth to a quarter of an inch off the brass and just make sure that the flame is evenly over the brass itself at this point. If it's up too high, you're gonna have to adjust it down. If it's down too low, you gotta adjust it up. You want it dead center of the brass. So a quick lowdown using test brass. It doesn't matter if this gets red hot. It's already destroyed anyways. You're just gonna use it to set the flame. You wanna put your speed control on a low setting. You can speed it up so it catches the wheel, then slow it down. Get this into the flame itself. Get that flame approximately one inch long. Make sure it's centered. The tip of the flame is about eighth of a quarter inch off the brass itself. It's at the junction of the neck and shoulder. Once you get this set up and it's just right, we're on to part three. Adjust that flame so it's approximately one inch long. Doesn't need to be full bore. Speed this up so it catches the wheel. Slow it back down. Drop it into the flame. Get it set so it's approximately an eighth of an inch off the uh, brass itself. And you're good to go. So now that the torch is set up in its general location, now we just need to adjust the burner and the speed control. And this is where I'll put in my trap door mod and fill up my hopper with the actual brass that I'm about to nail. Now once you've done this a few times and you get a method to your madness down, it should take less than roughly five pieces of test brass and less than a minute to get your torch and your speed control set just right using your test brass. Now when you're inserting your test brass, you turn on your flame and you're adjusting your speed control. While you're doing this, your, the main objective here is the glow of the neck. You want it so the second it starts to glow, it drops out of the flame. Now with the Neolese, there is a little bit of dwell time on this, I've noticed. So keep that in mind because it doesn't automatically drop out of the flame. You can notice it kind of veers out of the flame, so keep that in mind. Also, when you're setting up your torch and the speed control with your test brass, you gotta have it somewhat dark in the room. Now obviously, you don't want it pitch dark. You gotta keep safety in mind, but it needs to be dark enough Keep an eye on that glow. Second the neck starts to glow, get it out of the flame. Also keep an eye on the color of the flame. If you start to see any orange or yellow starting to burn off the brass itself, that means you're burning elements out of the brass you do not want to burn out. So keep that in mind. Short and simple, second it starts to glow, get it out of the flame. So let's get this going using our test brass to get the temperature set just right and the speed control set just right. Now this is next to impossible to try and do on camera for you to see the glow of the brass neck. You're just going to take my word for it, but uh, this is how it works. Adjust that flame down so it's approximately about an inch long. I'm going to put in one piece of test brass. 
the flame location set just right. I'm going to increase the flame just a little bit so it's approximately about an eighth of an inch off the brass and it doesn't take much on this dial to get it set just right. Alright, so the tip of the inner hotter flame is approximately an eighth to a quarter of an inch off the neck. I'm going to lower the lights even more. And the neck did not glow on that, so I need to slow the speed down some more. There. Like I said, it's hard to show on camera, but the neck just started to glow as it dropped out of the flame. I'm going to try one more just to make sure it's right. You need to speed this up just a little bit. But that's five pieces of brass. So I'm going to dump this test brass out of my tray so it doesn't get mixed in with my real brass. Now this is where I pull the trap door out and start annealing my actual brass. i got to lower the light again. Almost perfect. I need to slow it down just a little bit. And it's hard to show on the camera itself, but the neck just starts to glow as it drops out of the flame itself. And you don't need to adjust the speed control that much off the test brass. But the neck just starts to glow as it drops out of the flame. So I'm going to turn the light back on here now that I have everything set and I can just let the Neolese Gen 2 do its thing. Now with the lights on, you're not going to see the glow of the neck. and it's consistent annealing all the way through. Make sure all your propane is turned off. Unplug your power. Unscrew your propane tank. And you're done with the annealing process. And just a quick reminder, as in part one of this annealese overview, make sure when annealing that your tank is always in the upright position, not on its side and definitely not upside down. You want to make sure there's nothing but pure gas coming out of that torch. So if you have any more questions on the primal rights method of annealing brass, check out that link in the description box below. And if you appreciate my guide of how to anneal brass using the annealese, please subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you next time.